Welcome to Viral Recaps. Today I'm going to explain an adventure and family movie called We Have a Ghost from 2023. Spoilers incoming. Let's get right into it. The movie opens with an old spooky looking house. Suddenly, the lights come on and we hear multiple screams before a family storm outside, get inside their car, and run away as fast as they could. The scene then fast forwards to a year later. A new family approaches the house and Barbara, a real estate agent, is here to sell them the house. It looks even spookier inside and on top of that, it's very dirty. As Frank and Melanie are looking around, they notice their younger son, Kevin, didn't come into the house with them, so his father goes outside to call him in. As the boy comes to take a look at the house, he makes his way to the attic. While exploring, he senses someone's presence. As he goes further inside to investigate, Kevin hears a strange noise, but it turns out to be his older brother, Fulton, who was trying to scare him. Although the house is poor condition, the Presleys end up buying it. As they're moving in, Kevin sees his neighbor, a girl named Joy, while she's playing her trumpet. He seems instantly intrigued by her. At night, while they're all together, Kevin's father tries to cheer him up. He plays some music and asks Kevin to dance with him, but he refuses. Frank gets mad seeing his son so unhappy and takes his phone away. They get into an argument about it. They used to be very close to each other, but since Frank messed up many times with his business ideas and they constantly moved to a new place, their father-son relationship worsened. After dinner, Kevin goes to sleep. He wakes up in the middle of the night when he hears a noise from the attic that sounds like footsteps. He goes up there to see what's going on. He turns his flashlight on and as he's looking around, suddenly a ghost appears behind him. He looks like a middle-aged man. In an attempt to scare him, the ghost started to moan and growl. This makes Kevin laugh like crazy because it looks funny instead of scary. He even takes his phone out and starts recording. The ghost feels bad about failing and disappears. The next day, Kevin is searching for information about ghosts at school in the hallway. Joy calls him and asks him to guard the toilet's door. She's covering her number with a spray, as someone wrote it down here, and she keeps getting annoying calls. As Kevin mentions their neighbors, she warns him that the house they moved into is known as the House of Death, and everyone says it's haunted. As Kevin and his brother get back from school, Melanie takes Fulton's phone as he left behind his brother in the morning. Kevin then goes to the attic again and calls the ghost. He appears and tries to scare him again, but Kevin just tells him to stop as it won't work. He then invites the ghost to sit down next to him for a conversation. Kevin asks him if he can talk, but he nods no. Kevin then asks him a couple more questions, like where and how he died, but he replies that he doesn't remember anything. Kevin decides to call him Ernest as that's the name written on the shirt he's wearing. As they're talking, Fulton enters the attic and asks for Kevin's phone as his got taken. He refuses to give him the phone, so Fulton tries to take it with force. Fulton is then thrown far away from Kevin. This scares him a lot, and he runs away. It was obviously Ernest who helped Kevin. Later while they all have dinner, Frank is happy to see his son in a good mood as it happens rarely. Later that evening, while Kevin is on his laptop, Fulton uses his phone and finds the video recording of Ernest. Then he shows the video to their dad. Frank thinks it's a video montage at first, but when Kevin denies it, he asks him to send the video. They all make a pinky swear not to tell Melanie as she'll freak out if they tell her. Frank then hides in the closet and posts the video on YouTube and they get a good amount of views, but people accuse them that the video is fake, so they head over to the attic to get more footage. They can't convince Ernest to show himself. He only does so when Kevin shows up and starts to sing. As Frank is recording, his wife comes upstairs and freaks out when she sees the ghost. After uploading it, the video goes viral and starts new trends. Melanie demands her husband to sell the house immediately, but somehow he manages to convince her they'll make a lot of money from YouTube and they should stay there for good. The video goes viral to the point where it's shown on TV on Dr. Phil's show. Unfortunately, a former agent of Wizard Clip, Dr. Leslie Monroe, sees it as well. 
Wizard Clip was a CIA organization that hunted paranormal entities. It was shut down a long time ago, but Dr. Monroe is determined to reopen it, so she goes to meet with Agent Shipley. She tries to convince him, but he quickly sends her away as he thinks the ghost isn't real. In the following scene, as Frank's coming home from work, the whole street is crowded with fans of Ernest and news reporters. He seems to be happy about it, unlike his wife, who's quite annoyed at the situation. Meanwhile, Kevin is in the attic with Ernest. Kevin tells him that his memory loss is probably connected to trauma and tries to trigger his memories by showing him different items. They hear the noise outside and go by the window to look at the crowd. Ernest then asks the boy why he's assisting him. Kevin replies he wants to help him pass on to the afterlife because he's stuck. On the next day, he is researching the property records of their house to check if Ernest owned it years ago. Then Joy makes a noisy appearance and helps Kevin search through the records. They find out Ernest owned the house from 1965 to 1971. It turns out he doesn't have a death certificate though, which is quite fishy. Back into the house, as the interest around Ernest keeps on rising, Judy Romano, a celebrity who has a show called The West Bay Medium, came to take an interview with the ghost. Kevin is unhappy that his dad is trying to use the ghost as a lab dog, so they decide to have a little fun. When they already live, Frank tries to call Ernest multiple times, but he doesn't appear. Just as the crew is preparing to leave, the lights start to flicker and everything starts to fall onto the ground. Then Ernest shows up and scares everyone to death by finally doing some scary stuff. Judy even ends up throwing herself out of the window. Later on, Joy finds out the man they found on the property records is actually not Ernest the Ghost. It's another man named Ernest Scheller and he's still alive. That's why they didn't find a death record. They hope that this Ernest knows who the Ghost Ernest is. Joy also found out that Scheller used to own a bar that's just a mile away from the house. They want to bring their Ernest as it may trigger his memories if he knew the bar while he was still alive. As they come outside the house, the crowd on the street notices them and starts to chase them. In the meantime, Wizard Clip seems to have reopened as Dr. Monroe knocks on the Presley's door to investigate. She warns them that the ghost is dangerous and is not to be trusted, but Frank's not interested in her words at all and kicks her out of the house. When they finally arrive at the bar, they ask the current bar owner if she knows Scheller and it turns out she does. She shows them a picture on which Ernest and Scheller appear to be friends. They're now certain that there's a connection between them and they have to find Scheller in order to uncover the mystery and help Ernest pass onto the afterlife. As they're heading back home, Ernest's memories are triggered when he sees a little girl on a carousel. He tries to touch her with his hand and calls her June, but the girl starts to scream out of fear. Many people recorded the accident and now everyone thinks that Ernest is not as friendly as he looks. This causes the wizard clip to have a reason for a warrant and take Ernest away. They take over the house later that night as they hope to catch Ernest, but it's too late as he already left with Kevin and Joy. They took Fulton's car and they're heading towards Scheller's home, which is 400 miles away. They made Frank say Ernest abducted the kids on the news so that people stop thinking of him as friendly and report if they see him. They stop at a gas station to get some energy drinks. While Kevin's inside, police officer sees their car and notices Joy and Ernest inside of it. A second officer comes to the scene and they try to detain them, but unsuccessfully as Ernest interferes on time. Coming next is a chase scene in which Ernest tries his best to save Joy and Kevin from trouble. Eventually, they manage to escape unharmed. As it gets dark outside, Ernest manages to snatch keys to a motel room and they stay there for the night. Kevin tells Joy she still has time to get out of this messy situation and avoid jail, but she says that she won't abandon him like that. Joy then says that she doesn't fear going to jail because her life already feels like one. Her father has set unrealistic goals and standards for her to achieve. Kevin also shares that he's constantly arguing with his dad. They feel very attracted to each other and want to get intimate. Ernest is delighted to see them together. Meanwhile, the bar owner tells the CIA where they're headed. As they finally reach the address, Kevin goes inside the house to talk with Scheller, while Joy and Ernest wait in the car. 
Schiller says that Ernest's real name is Randy. Ernest's wife is Schiller's wife's sister. She died while in labor and all he had left was his daughter, June. He was heartbroken and began drinking a lot. One day, he left his daughter June in front of Scheller's home and never came back. Kevin doesn't believe any of this. Apparently, Ernest came inside the house and now shows himself. Just when he does so, Joy starts honking and when Kevin looks through the window, the CIA is all over the place. They get inside the house and use special thermal weapons to capture Ernest. They let Joy and Kevin go without consequences because Frank cooperated with catching Ernest. Meanwhile, he's kept in a cell for entities. He's approached by Dr. Monroe. She cries tears of joy as she has waited for this day her whole life. Ernest wipes her tears and this melts her heart because now she truly sees that he's not just an evil ghost as she thought. Agent Shipley brings in people to show them the ghost, but Dr. Monroe doesn't like this as she has now developed a soft corner for Ernest. Meanwhile, Joy goes to check in on Kevin, but he looks very upset and doesn't want to talk with anyone. He still appreciates her for checking in. Coming back to Ernest, he's asked to comply when being told to get down on his knees. As he's not doing so, the security guard tries to use the thermal gun on him. The eagle brooch on the guard's uniform trigger Ernest's memories and he finally remembers how he died. We're thrown into a flashback where Scheller kills Ernest by hitting him in the head with a big golden eagle. Scheller then dressed Ernest in his clothes and buried him. He and his wife wanted to take June away from him as they couldn't have kids. Ernest then comes back to reality and Dr. Monroe helps him flee and he runs away with a Lyft driver. As it's raining heavily, Kevin wakes up by hearing noise in the house. He walks to the kitchen and sees that the back door is open. He closes the door, but when he turns around, Scheller is sitting there. He takes out a gun, saying that he kept the murder a secret for 50 years, but now it's all ruined because of him. Kevin tells him that he has no idea what he's talking about, but Scheller doesn't trust him. He throws a glass on the ground, which wakes up everyone else. They go downstairs to see that Kevin is being held at gunpoint. Scheller says that his wife Ramona made him kill Ernest because she wanted to take June away. As he's talking, Kevin manages to free himself and Frank fights Scheller, but he manages to knock him out with a frying pan. Kevin and Fulton run away, but Scheller chases them. Fulton tries to take him out, but he's thrown down the stairs and falls unconscious. Then he goes after Kevin into the attic, and as he is about to shoot him, Ernest appears and saves him by knocking Scheller out. Frank enters the room and sees that he woke up and is about to shoot Kevin, so he pushes him out the window. Ernest then disappears as the police arrives. In the next scene, Agent Shipley questions Kevin about Ernest, but he simply says that he has disappeared. In reality though, Frank and Kevin found his daughter June and took her to him. Ernest meets her and instantly remembers all the time they had spent together before he was killed. The day passes by as he's spending time with Kevin on the lake. Suddenly, Ernest's body starts to disintegrate. He takes a look at them for one last time before disappearing into the air. Hey, if you enjoyed this recap, please consider subscribing and leaving a like as it helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching and take care.